Okay, good morning. Lindsay Matenko, how are you doing? Good morning, Brad. I'm doing great. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Now, we we did swim around the same time, so we have our, our respective flags in the background. I've got yes. my Australian Olympic one, you got the USA Olympic Which, one. Which what year is behind you? So this is 2000, actually. It's the okay. it's it's very it's a very rare flag, that one. Um, so I'm I'm very proud of it. The, the Sydney Olympic team. And then on top, I actually got Dawn Fraser to put her name oh, up there. So it's very a pretty cool. yeah, it's a cool one. So what very what cool. uh Olympics did you go to as this, a swimmer? This 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 flag behind me is four and then i've got one on the other side of my office that's 2000 so yeah you, you didn't get 96 though right i did not make 96 no no yeah yeah did you go to the trials i did yeah and you missed you, was... you missed like me i missed by three 100s oh no i didn't miss by that <laughs> i've swum the four i missed by a lot more than three 100s <laughs> i finaled in the four at, at yeah. 96 but yeah <laughs> well, what was your, your main event was the two free yes yeah yeah i swam two free in sydney two back in sydney and oh, then wow. swim two free in um, in Athens, yeah. And in the four by one. Yeah, I, I I have good memories of you walking around the pool deck and being being the swimmer, you know, being yeah. very dominant. Being it's been that, a while. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, no, I just I just put on a swimsuit again too for the first time, trying to trying to do some stuff on Instagram, and and I was like, all right, Brett, you better get in shape, buddy. Oh you know? man, I'm like every, every time it's like everyone's like, why don't you race? I'm like, first of all, like I don't ever want to dive in again. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. diving off the blocks freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> I know, isn't isn't it weird how you you get to a point where you're like, I don't want to do that again, you know? Like <laughs> you spend your whole life doing it, but now now we're we're in swimming. We're still obsessed with swimming, but not for not for us. So right. Um, right. Now, I, lot, I did right? want to start by this, like just just saying, uh, you you were just in Israel, right? So like, it's pretty wanna... tragic what's going on. Oh, over it's there heartbreaking. Right yeah. It's so heartbreaking. I mean, I think um, I loved the country when I was there. I felt incredibly safe, and mm. um, the people were lovely, and uh, Food was amazing, <laughs> mm, so yeah. I, so I'm I'm heartbroken actually. It's um incredibly sad. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was in South Africa just recently, uh, the past few weeks, and somebody said to me specifically, like, "You've got have you been to Israel? You've got to go to Israel." And like we were talking about it, like you know, just a few days ago, and um, and yeah, and then this is going on. It's just yeah. so sad. But um, you you got the chance to see your daughter compete there, hey, for the World Junior. I Juniors. did. I did. Wow. I got to see her compete and I got to watch swimming, which is not something I get to do very often and just yeah. like sit and focus. And so that was really fun for me. And, and I got to watch her swim and it was pretty special. Oh, so you just went as a parent. Um, I went as kind of a, kind of a dual role, but okay. um, I got to do, I got to do both. So I got to watch and then I got to work with the team a little bit here and there and, and they called on me when they needed some advice. And so that was fun. And what's your daughter's name again? Madison. Madison. So how does Madison feel about mom being on the pool deck while, while she's racing? Um, I try, I try to be as mom as much as I can when she's racing, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. And then as she's getting ready to race and then do my job and, and let her work with her coaches and all that kind of stuff. Cause it's not my job to coach her. Right. And so mm. um, I try to let her be herself when she's on the pool deck and, and be mom when I take her back to the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, did she swim the same event? 200 free? She swims two in the four. Oh, One, wow. two, four. Yeah. <laughs> Is that hard for you not to give advice? No, no, I, it, it really isn't. I only give advice if she asks, you know, like, and, and so, and that's pretty rare because she's got a lovely coach and he does a great job and a great team that we, that we have the opportunity to swim with. And so we just let him do it. And if she, ever needs advice she'll she'll come to us but it's it's super important that this is her own thing who who's coaching her? let's give him some love she coaches um george george Heidinger coaches her at okay. my, our i was gonna say pine creek that high school that's her high school but pikes peak athletics here in the springs now has she picked a school already is she at no, age we're in that process <laughs> oh wow you're in that process too that's we're in that process <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, geez. It's, i mean how blessed right like how blessed that she has these opportunities to pick a university where she can excel both academically and, and athletically. Right. So, um, yeah, she's, we're, we're pretty blessed to be in that situation. Yeah. Not only that, I I think uh, all of America uh, are blessed. I mean, it's, it's the reason why I came is because I didn't have those opportunities in Australia. So like to, to even just for any swimmer to have the opportunity to swim in college and get a right. scholarship is incredible, right? Like it's just, that's why people come to America. Um, but the situation she's in is even more unique where she can almost pick the team that she wants to go to. Right. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's, she's had a lot of opportunities that, that, um, that have been presented to her and, and it, you know, getting the opportunity to pick which, uh, which program you want to be a part of 
has its pros and cons, right? <laughs> so um, it's a, it's a pretty hard decision, especially for you know now that recruiting's done a year earlier from from when when my husband and I did it. That um, it just makes it a little they're a little younger. They're making making really tough decisions that are going to affect you know six six eight years down the line for them. Yeah. So um, it's just a different process. But yeah, when the, when to be we're having a lot of fun. And for those that don't know your full background, your husband, Mike, is an Olympic swimmer as well. So like the the genes, the history's there. And so it's it's pretty cool that both of you have been at that level. But now in terms of just um, the advice or, or where you stand in kind of her decision making with that. It's not our decision. It's hers. <laughs> yeah. We've made a pretty fine line. And and um, this is not not about us, what, where we want, want her to go. It's about where she wants to go and, and ultimately um, left that decision up to her. And I think from our perspective, we have a very different take on it. Right. And so we know, we know a lot, we've been involved in this whole process. We've been involved in, in swimming for a really long time. And so that can be both good and bad. And we've um, essentially just left that up to her. And again, mm. same with, with how she swims to her free. She'll come to me if she wants, if she wants yeah. advice. If not that this is going to be her decision. Well, that's cool. Well, look, I, I didn't uh, formally want to talk about your daughter, but I'm glad <laughs> we did. But uh, j just in terms of uh, you talked about your position, um, explain to me your position, your role. Like, uh, what what is it? For those that don't know, what, what is your role? You've been in it now for, what, six years, I believe? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been at Swimming for almost 18, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, it's been a really long time. And so it's my, my role is kind of involved. But essentially, um, I oversee the national team division of USA Swimming, which also includes, um, you know, several other people who work work in the division with me. Um, I get to work with every day, which is awesome. Um, also get to work with coaches and athletes every day. Um, we have a national team meeting later on this afternoon. Um, so just getting to work with the athletes who help make or make the national team, which then in turn, many of them turn into Olympians um, and, and get to represent us on international stages. We have a group leaving for the Pan American Games on Monday. Um, so it's just um, a great opportunity. But not only does that include um, helping athletes, you know, at, provide these opportunities for these athletes to be successful on the international stage. It also like I have to do budgets and I have to write selection procedures and I have to manage people. And so there's a lot of different things that that go into being in this role. Who, who else is in the team? You talked about managing people. T tell oh, us gosh, I've got um, let, me, let me see if I can make and get them all. Uh, Keenan, Stacy, Bryce, Eric, Matt, Kirk, Curtis. Um, Carly, Jennifer, Kelsey. Um, so we got quite a few people here. A lot of, you know, working on our junior team, our open water team, our performance team, um, our logistics team, our services team, our med medical team. So there's a lot of a uh, lot of moving pieces. Now you're you're the first woman to be kind of appointed as a director of USA Swimming like that. I mean, that that's an accomplishment in itself. But I, I guess you don't look at it that way. It's just a job, and you're you're working. So it's not like I'm a woman. So you know. <laughs> respect Absolutely. me differently. <laughs> it's not yeah. like that, but, <laughs> but in terms of ha have there been any surprise, any challenges, any, any things that have been really cool along the way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first of all, like not only am I the first woman, I'm also the first athlete, which I think is a really, it really brings a um, unique perspective to, to the position. Um, no one in this position has been an athlete before, you know, I've stood behind the blocks at the Olympic games. So I can bring mm -hmm. kind of a, a unique perspective to, to the, the position. Um, it's, it's, it's evolving all the time. Like we are always constantly trying to make sure we're providing the best services to our coaches and athletes, trying to help them get better, um, both in the pool, out of the pool. We do a lot. Um, we have a wonderful mental health program that we run, um, in our, out of, out of the national team division. But I think one of the biggest challenges that I've kind of trying to, trying to figure out still, and, and I don't know if not, it's a challenge, but it's also, a, um, really makes us great is the kind of diversity we have in USA swimming. We don't have one hub, you know, we don't have one place where all of our national team athletes train and, and work together. And so we don't have one place where we can go and, you know, you know, talk to them and, you know, give them all the services we provide and give them performance services. So we have to kind of travel all over, all over the country, which is in my opinion, good and bad, right? Like, our diversity makes us great, I think. And we have wonderful coaches who can support our athletes on all over the country. And so I think that's been a little bit of a challenge when you're trying to get a group together to, you know, perform as a team. And, and I've always been super impressed as, you know, you're like arch rivals at, at trials and then you come together and you're all, you know, a great, a great team and the, the team culture is really good. So it's, it's just provides a different, a different perspective than, than what is done kind of all over the world. But um but it works well with us because I think the diversity makes us great as well. Right. So that's kind of, it's kind of back and forth a little bit on that one. 
Yeah, look, I know USA Swimming tried it for a little while, like to have these performance hubs in a way, right, where kind of like pro athletes could go almost. You know, I remember, you know, Ryan Lochte and that group uh, at Charlotte where, where Dave oh, Marsh right. had a group. Yeah, so it's like I don't I don't know, like I'm not exactly sure where it went wrong or um, why it disappeared in that sense, but it's like it, it does seem that for the pro athletes that they're still kind of, um, I wouldn't say forced, but they're only real – choices would be to be part of college um situation like bob bowman for instance has sure. a pro team right now and things like that so like is there anything in the horizon to maybe change that down the road again or we're not going back to what we had in the past yeah i don't i don't think there's anything in the on the horizon unless unless you know we can we can set talk for hours about what's going on in the ncaa system um, right, right. and what's happening um in college athletics but i think right now we we love the freedom that our athletes have to choose where they want to train Right. And like I said earlier, we have a lot of wonderful coaches who do really great things with these athletes. And so to to force an athlete out of a situation and put them in a, dif a different situation that may not be the right situation for them is not the model we want to choose. Um, and, let, and letting them be able to choose that freedom to train where they where they feel comfortable and with, where they feel is best for them is, is the, the path we want to take at this time. Now, uh, we're less than a year out of the Olympics. How do you feel like uh, USA Swimming is looking uh, you know, less than a year out? Yeah, that's kind of scary that we're already less than a year <laughs> out. Can we feel like we just came back from Tokyo? I think it's going to be a completely different Olympics. Obviously, it was, Tokyo was was pretty was pretty hard, you know, for for obvious reasons. But mm -hmm. I think we're looking good. I mean, I think clearly the the rest of the world is working hard and doing some great things as well. But you know, we have a we had a really young team. We're going to provide 140 unique athletes the opportunity to participate in international competition this year, which is awesome, right? We believe that that. Getting that experience, getting that opportunity to get on a plane, travel, you know, travel overseas or eat different food and all these kinds of things are really important because, as you know, when you go to an Olympic Village, it's it's not an easy task. And so, you know, being able to have a little bit of an opportunity to, to go internationally really helps our athletes, we believe, at the Olympics. Yeah. Now we, we have uh, just a couple of months to the another World Championships in Doha. <laughs> how's how's USA Swimming kind of treating the selection and and the, the 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 team for the world championships. Yeah, definitely. Well, our, our procedures have been posted for a little bit now because yeah. we have to, you know, we have to follow federal law and write selection procedures and all those kinds of things for selection of our team. Um, but you know, by by our athletes um, winning medals in all the Olympic relays this past summer really takes a lot of pressure off of us. You know, we don't have to send our best athletes. We don't have to send our a full team to try to qualify athletes for the Olympic Games. That was a huge huge win, we feel like, um, from this past summer. So it's going to be, we're going to provide opportunities for athletes. You know, I think we're taking a really small team. Um, I think 14 men and 14 women, which is roughly about half of what we would, we would mm. take maybe a little bit more. Um, so it's, it's still providing an opportunity if people think it's the right, uh, right part of their plan, um, to go to Doha and get some long course racing. You know, sometimes we don't have a lot of opportunities to race long course, um, especially at that, at that level on that stage. So I don't know. We won't select our team until after Pan Ams, which is, like I said earlier, they leave next week. Um, so we won't select them until after Pan Ams. But um, so it'll be interesting to see who decides what they want, who wants to come and get that opportunity or who wants to stay home and train. Have, have some of the top athletes already submitted a yes or a no? No, we haven't done that yet. Oh, yeah, we haven't. Okay. Got, I'm actually was thinking about doing that this week. Maybe just kind of getting like. Are you interested? Would you say yeah. yes or no? Because we have a pretty right. quite quick turnaround um, from right. when that November one day when we start our selection. So I was thinking about just kind of, what do you think? Are you thinking about doing this? Yes or no? Just kind of right now. But we haven't gotten to that point yet. Now, if if you're only selecting 14 and uh, the relays have already qualified, are you not planning on swimming relays uh, in Doha? No, I think we will. They just may not be, you know, they might, you know, it depends on who's all the, the, the makeup of the team, right? You know, so right. we will have some people that, probably get selected in the four and a three that would have to swim the two on the, you know, the four by two or somebody that gets selected maybe in the hunter back that might have to swim the four by one, you know, so we would have to, we're going to definitely um, submit entries. It, they just may not be um, our, our um, highest performing relays. Yeah. yeah. But we do um, want to give them opportunities to do it. Yeah. Yeah, if they want to have a race, why not? Absolutely. You know, get up there. Um, yeah. What about Caleb Dressel? Is there any chance that he could qualify for World Championships in Doha um, if he wanted to? Yeah, I think if he wanted to, I think I think um, you know Caleb, um, if he, if that's something that is in his plan, I don't know. I'd have to go through the procedures and see where his time set sits because we, the way we write our procedures is all based on time. Um, 
and his times and I think in the hundred flies probably his fastest from last last summer. Um, mm-hmm. And he's not on our national team, so he's not a top six. But but um, I don't know what his plan is in regards to Doha. But um, hopefully his his you know plan is to to be back in the water. And I got to see him a few weeks ago, and he looks good. And we're looking forward to his return. Nice. Now, in terms of um, coaches for the Olympics, you guys always go ahead and kind of name the coaches a year out. You just uh, named your two coaches. How, how did you come up with uh, the coaches that you selected and, and uh, what was the procedure there? Yeah. Yeah. Again, another special procedure um, that we have to write. Um, so we have athlete or we have coaches who the way that it was done, if you were a head coach on one of our like our large international competitions from 2018 through this past summer, mm. you had the opportunity to apply. And so that was like Pam Packs, World University Games, World Championships, the Olympic Games from 2020, um, uh, World Championships these past two years. So they all, all those, those coaches had an opportunity to apply. And then we would go, we had a small little committee of coaches and athletes who um, re- made a recommendation to, to myself and um, the CEO. So. Now, um, would there be a possibility in the future where you wouldn't select a, a, a coach that was affiliated with with a college team, for instance? Yeah, I think I think that's a really interesting question because I, I think that it can go it can go kind of both ways. Um, I think you want to have a strong leader, right? When when you're putting together these coaching steps, especially for the Olympic Games, right? That you want a strong mm-hmm. leader who is you know dynamic, who can lead a team of people that come up from all over the country. They are. Some of them are 16 year old, 16 years old, and some of them are 32 years old, right? We have a, such a wide range of, of athletes on our team. And so we want to make sure we can select somebody that is you know, dynamic and can unite all those people to be, to have a great culture, to swim fast, um, to work well with the other coaches on staff. So when you, when you were kind of thinking about putting those staffs together, that's kind of who you're looking for, right? And yeah. then you build a staff um, around that. And we won't, we may, um, we may add assistant coaches prior to trials, but we may not. Um, and then wait until until trials, until we have some athletes on the team. But I think sometimes having um, a unique perspective of maybe not having someone on the team um, just kind of brings a different dynamic to to the um, competition. I think, well, you know, for example, at our um, World Juniors, we had one of our coaches didn't have um, an athlete on the team. One of our head coaches didn't have an athlete on the team for our Pan Ams. We have a coach that doesn't have an athlete on the team. And I think it just brings a little bit of a um, different dynamic to the coaching staff. And then, you know, obviously with the national team division staff that is there, puts a little bit more um, work on their plate to make sure that they're getting all the information to the coaching staff to um, select relays and, and all of those kinds of things. But um, it's a great opportunity for a lot of coaches too to, to have an opportunity to coach internationally throughout the summer, right? Not many not many coaches get that chance. And just like our athletes, we provide opportunities for our athletes to swim internationally. We would like to, we want to provide that same opportunity for our coaches to coach internationally, just gives them experience that they can bring back to their home clubs and, and um, use to help USA make USA swimming better. Yeah. Now, Lindsay, I was, I was on the 2001 team in Fukuoka. I was lucky enough to be part of that team. And, and I know that in, in the Don Talbot rain back in Australia, uh, it was his mission to, to want to beat the U S you know, any way that he could. And, um, at that championship, we ended up winning the gold medal tally Mm -hmm. thanks to the likes of Ian Thorpe and some other incredible athletes that we had, but, (laughs) but it, it it kind of went that same way this year at the world championships in Fukuoka again, you know, 20, 20 odd years later. So, um, how, how do you feel about the performance? Do you feel like America came out on top? You feel like Australia came out on top or, or like how, how did it all kind of sit with you? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on how you what you want to call out on top, right? Obviously, clearly, Australia won the gold medal count. They were amazing. They swam unbelievable. Um, it was it was really fun to watch. Um, you know, I've got lots of lots of Aussie friends, so you know that um, yeah. it was really exciting to to see that. But um, but also really um, gave us a chance to look at what we're doing and how we do things and how we can be better. And you know, but winning, you know. I think we want to total, I think it was 38 medals, 32 in Olympic events. Like yeah. that's a ton of medals, right? Um, that's a really great, great thing to be um, proud of. And 20 silver medals is, is outstanding. That just to me shows that there's a lot of opportunity, you know, for our athletes. We had like 84% of our swims got final swims. Like that's just opportunity, you know, and that gives these athletes an opportunity to be in the final, to race it at the highest competition of the year gives them that experience. So when they do it next year, they'll, they'll be ready to, to, um, you know, more prepared, even, even more so. So 
Um, I think that, you know, I think we were, I was really happy with the way we did. I think there was obviously room for improvement. We always want to win the gold medal count. Um, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. That's something that um, we always strive for. So, uh, but by being able to kind of step back and look at things, um, there were a lot of positives that came out of this. We had 16 rookies on this team. Mm. So it's, it's, um, it's a great, it's a great springboard for us as we, as we get ready for Paris next year. Yeah, no, I agree with all that. You know, it, it's, 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 impossible to say that it was um not a great performance when you come away with so many medals and and it's such a young team for sure and but but it's it's certainly a situation where the world feels like um it, it's i wouldn't say catching up to the u.s in any way like i wouldn't say that but it, it's definitely a competitive landscape you know you've oh, got sure. australia that's performing really well you've got china which you know had, a, had an incredible meet you got all these other countries. It feels like there's more balance in the world of swimming, where where it used to. When I was swimming, it felt very U.S. dominant in a way. And not to say that it's still not there, and but it does feel like there's more balance. Would you say? Oh, 100 percent. I completely agree with you. I think we saw it um, in Tokyo. I think we. I think we we we're continuing to see it. Um, I think there's a lot more balance. Um, I think a lot more people are. You know, we talked about relays, putting emphasis on relays, and you know, some people in Tokyo didn't swim. There, some countries did some individual events mm. to focus on relays, right? Like right. that's not something we would we yeah, would ever took do. The, they took the uh, the co the collegiate mentality. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, so definitely a, a much the, the world is getting faster, one hundred percent, and uh, we have to be ready for that. Um, all, all athletes do, all the best athletes do, no matter where you're from. Yeah, look, I'm trying. I, I feel like um, I do feel like I'm having an impact in that. You know, I'm trying to get on all the best coaches in the world to share knowledge and information. I'm, I'm talking to the best swimmers. So I do feel good about the impact that my podcast is having. Um, do you guys pay attention to that in a, in a way of like when when somebody big comes on any podcast and starts sharing information? Do you look at that? Do you analyze that and say, because that's that's part of I think the world's getting smaller is that we're just sharing more information. Right? right. And I think I think it's great. I think anytime you can share information is is super important. I think it helps it helps the sport, right? Um, first and foremost, which I think you like we talked about in the beginning is something we we love the yeah. sport, right? And we want to see it be successful. Um, I want to see it be successful at the at the Olympic Games, obviously from from my perspective, but I think it just helps the next coaches coming up, right? Then you know who who's gonna be the next one that's gonna be um, as dominant like Eddie, right? Like who's going to, who's going to continue to develop these young athletes as and athletes change too, right? Is, you know, what they, what, um, you know, the kind of work that we put in maybe back in the day may not be like what they're doing now too. Right. And it's different. And that's how sport evolves, right? Like that's how sport changes and gets better. And just because we did it one way, you know, back 20, you know, 20 plus years ago, doesn't mean that that's the way right. they should be doing it now. Right. And so, I think by by sharing information and we can share it so much more freely now too, right? right? Like we can't, we couldn't, you know, you would have to send a, a fax, right? I don't know how yeah. you would share information <laughs> back in the day, but um, yeah. email was just getting started when I when <laughs> I think when I made my first Olympic team. So um, it's just a different it's a different era, and we if we're not willing to learn um, from each other and learn and get better and be challenged, like I'm not sure what we're doing here. No, I agree. Um, and, and look, I think the world has looked at USA swimming for many, many, many years and tried to analyze, like, what can we take from them? Because they're so good. They're so dominant. So it's not like the world hasn't had their eye on you. But yeah. um, in terms of maybe what, l l let's just say, Australia or China or somebody else, are, are you guys taking learnings from them now? To, like, how are they on the rise? Are you kind of looking at that and saying, oh, what yeah. are they doing better than us? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, like we, we would, why wouldn't we, you know, like, why wouldn't we be looking at women's freestyle, right. And trying yeah, to find yeah, ways yeah. that we could, that we could be better. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's just, I'm trying to figure um, that out too. My God, they just got like a, geez, I don't know. I mean, I, they're very, I've tried for many years to come home and, and 29 low, my tuna free, but to come home in 28, <laughs> man, I, <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they got a factory of female swimmers in, in Australia yeah. right now. That's yeah. crazy. Um, for sure. For sure. So, in terms of uh, maybe like a four four year plan, is there is there anything specifically that you guys might be looking at to kind of shift and alter in the lead up to kind of LA? Yeah, I mean, I think I think we need. I really want to get through the next eight months, ten months. Yeah, that's <laughs> you true. know, we got yeah. we've got a big a big games coming up, and I know the games on home soil is going to be awesome. It's going to get a lot of people pumped up and. We have some things that, you know, that we have some things we probably need to work on a little bit. You know, let's just you talk about women's freestyle, but like mm -hmm. 
we we really want to do well in Paris, you know, like our goal yeah. is Paris and we want to support our athletes. And, you know, by having these 140 athlete opportunities that we had this year, we really know who to focus on um, and who to support, um, you know, in and out of the water and, and how we can be better at supporting them so they can be better in, in Paris. Right. And so um, those are all things that we're looking forward to. I'm, I'm looking forward to LA just because, you know, I've lived there for a while, but um but I'm also looking, really looking forward to what, what the next few months bring. USA Swim has always had um, situations where you've had the superstar effect and the mm -hmm. superstars. You know, it's like you, you've had your athletes who win four, five, six, seven, all the way up to eight, eight. gold medals. So it's <laughs> like, um, do you think those days are gone now? You think you think those are a thing of the past? I, well, I think winning eight gold medals is for sure yeah, a thing yeah, in the yeah, past. I don't know if yeah. touching <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, we, we were been so blessed with so many um, amazing swimmers, obviously Michael being as dominant as he has been for years, yeah. you know, Katie obviously being dominant. Um, but that, I think it's, it's something to take, to take into consideration when you're talking about being on the top of the podium and the medal tally and all that kind of stuff. It takes three male athletes to win as many medals as Michael did. And they're not even all going to be gold, right? right or right. even, even from Caleb's perspective in Tokyo, right? Yeah. We need to have three athletes when, when the medal, the medal, um, that one one athlete did for us in, in one games, right? And so yeah. um I don't I don't know if those days are completely over, but they're definitely gonna be a lot harder. Yeah. How do you utilize a guy like Michael Phelps? Um this is just a question that came into my head by the way. It just popped up. But um like I'm thinking like the, the greatest swimmer in history, you know, how how do you access a man like that? How do you utilize him so that he can be an asset into the future for USA swimming. Have you guys put time and energy into that? Yeah, we we're definitely trying to can you know have a relationship with Michael because he was such an important piece of right. USA swimming history, right? right. Like and, you know take and take away you know medals, but the way that he conducted himself and the mm. way that he um, led the team and and you know took no BS and you know mm. just really just you know put in the work, right? Like mm. if you know for, to for him to win eight gold medals. I, I remember that really vividly. And that was my, my first Olympics kind of in this, this role and just the way that he was able to focus on the task at hand, right. And just focus on what he was doing in that moment, getting the job done and then going to the next, like it was absolutely fascinating to watch. And, and he was that way throughout his entire career. You know, I was on the Olympic team with him in 2000 and then you know, was the team leader in 2016. So it was been really fun. It was really fun for me to watch kind of the evolution and the growth and the determination. And, and, um, I think he, he kind of had the mix of mix of all of it, right? Like determination, right. hard work. He, um, you know, you learned a lot just by watching him. Right. Yeah. No, I, I learned a lot from watching him. I was on the, I was on the pool deck as a swimmer and, and a coach and I spend, uh, many hours just sitting there watching Michael Phelps. I mean, I've had, I got so many memories of of thinking to myself, that's why he's that good. I mm -hmm. get it now. Like when you see the behind the scenes stuff, right? it, like, it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's yeah, why he's yeah. so good. Yeah, that's just where I, that's how I feel about. It. I'm like, my God, he could just be such an asset to USA Swimming. I, I, I'd love to see him more involved. You know? Yes, so we would too. We yeah. Would too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, was in, I just have a funny story about in Tokyo. We had an athlete. Um, fortunately, you know, won, won a gold medal. I think I'm, it might have been day one or two. And he, and they were like, how did, how did Michael do this eight times? Like they right. were so yeah. exhausted, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, and just, so that just, it just really shows to me like how special that mm. that, that year was for him. And, mm. and, um, and then to be on multiple Olympic teams, I mean, just, I think people sometimes forget how hard it is to make one Olympic mm. team and, and to make to to win to make as many as he did and to win as many medals like it's just I mean, yeah. we have several athletes to do that but people should really be honored by making one Olympic team it's a really big for sure <laughs> for sure for sure yeah <laughs> like no I'm with you on that one just the emotional um, toll it takes on your body and and the way that he was able to um, compartmentalize that emotionally of like okay here's my rivals in this event here's what I have to do in this event I'm totally focused and switched on. Okay, that event's over. Bam, switch. Here's my rivals in the next it event. Was, it's just like, it was absolutely fascinating. It was amazing. Yeah, and to yeah. do it every session. Yeah. Every for eight days. Back back. And, and what people don't, yeah, they don't realize he's sitting in drug testing rooms for hours on end, late, late in the night. He's probably not getting back to bed till two in the morning. No, he's got to get up. It's just like, oh yeah. my God. Yeah. This, yeah. The professionalism of that can, there's so much to learn from that. That's where I think, you know, just in terms of like 
the management, the athlete management, the mentality, the, you know, all that could just be such a great resource for this young, like you said, you've got 16 rookies, like learning right. that and, and having a way to kind of pass on that knowledge. So valuable, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. He came and talked to the team uh, via Zoom in 2020 or 2021, yeah. I guess. And yeah. he was incredibly powerful. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, Another question, just to kind of, kind of in terms of uh, female coaches, I mean, it seems like there's a, a shortage. Obviously, I mean, is there something uh, USA Swimming specifically is doing in the performance side to kind of keep more female coaches at the top end? Yeah, that's it's that's a really tough one. I I, I completely agree with you. Like mm. elite level female coaches is something we're lacking for 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 sure. And at least um you know at the at the head coach space, you know if that makes sense, because we have a lot of a lot of excellent um, assistant coaches that are that are female and um, we're, we're, you know, we talked about our four teams. Like we had two females um, lead our, lead our teams this summer. Uh, Jenny Newsbaum from Long Island led our world junior team. And then Carol Capitani from UT led our world championship team. Uh, we had females, you know, staff members on every single one of our teams, um, sometimes more than one. So we're working hard in that space to try to get more female opportunities. We, um, try to bring as many um, female coaches up for like select camps for our junior team camps, just to get them involved um, in what we do um, at USA swimming and how we run at USA swimming and, and um, just really trying to find ways to engage them in all aspects of the sport. Um, not just in the coaching, but our governance and, you know, getting a seat at the table at our board meetings. And, you know, like, you know, we're fortunate of, of eight executive uh, team members, five of them are women at USA swimming. I'm, I'm mm. one of those five. Right. So mm. trying to, you know, set by example, <laughs> lead yeah. by example in, in that case. Um, but it's definitely, it's a definite problem. I mean, in our, in our club system, we have 50% um, of our coaches are women, you know, in our, in our um, club system. So we definitely have women in place that can, that can rise up. And so we're, you know, any suggestions you have is <laughs> we'll, we'll take, cause it's, it's a hard road to, to, um, to conquer and, and one that we definitely need to keep working on. Yeah, I think the only thing that I've heard from the, the female coaches is the is the lack of support in a way, like it just mm -hmm. to kind of together as as females, right? Like bringing them together more often, getting them to have support groups, things like that. I think that's just something that needs to continue into the future of like, hey, let's pull all the women together and somehow support them in in getting together, you know? So yeah. whether that be in flights and hotels and things like that, just time or just having some fun events where you where you pull them in and, and making them feel like a respected uh, important part of the swimming community for sure yeah, and, and that they have a um a, a support group and like right. people to, right. to reach out to you know and and um it's it's a different mm. being a female in sports is is it's not an easy easy place to be in right and so mm. um you know, we talked about earlier about me being the first female in this role being the first mm. athlete you know you're you're different than what it has been in the past and to get people all people, men, women to, to respect what you're doing doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And so it takes, it takes time and, you know, you continue to push and continue to strive to, to not just be the, the best in my role, just because I'm a female, right. I want to be the best in my role, no matter what. Right. And we have a lot of coaches that are like, I don't want to be, you know, the, the token female on staff. I want to be the best coach on staff. Right. Like, you know, so those are kinds of things that we have to, um, mm continue to keep in mind too, when we're doing, when we're um, working with these female coaches, because we have some great female coaches out there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um, look, Lindsay, you, you've been doing a fantastic job up, up to, you know, any, any form of criticism that has come out, maybe have come from this world championships where it's like, you still dominated the the medal tally. Right. And, yeah. and it was like, <laughs> it, it's easy to, I, 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 look, I was part of the one of the most dominant um, NCAA teams in history, right? So, like, and then I took over from that. So it's like when you're winning, you know, everything's great, and then there's, yeah. there's little things that come up, and then the criticism starts. So, like, you've been you've been killing your position for many many years, Lindsay. No, so I appreciate been, that. Thank you. You're doing a fantastic job. So Thanks. keep doing what you're doing. There's little adjustments always have to be made. That's fine. <laughs> always, and like I, yeah, I mean, like I said, if you're not trying to be better and trying to learn and then what are we doing? Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What about in terms of Eric uh, Poske? Uh, what um, what's his new role there? What, what's he doing? Yeah, well, he's he's been our you know program director of our junior team for a little over a year now. He's doing a great job. So we promoted him to director. But some of the things that we get we hear from coaches is, you know, I can't I can't go to the tier pro swim series. So can someone on your staff, you know, to run pace with my athletes or, or do stuff like that. And this just kind of puts that you know, little role on his, you know, that little like 
Okay, this if you need somebody at the Pro Swim Series, reach out, reach out to Eric and he can help your athletes. If you need somebody, uh, you know, at the OPTC when you're training because you can't be there, um, let mm. us know and Eric can help with that. He'll he has all his coaching certs up to date and all those kinds of things. So he can have that role. So um, so that just it just gives people another option, another person to to reach out to um, if they if they need help and support. He's running a lot of um, co some coach education webinars that that um, we're doing, um, you know, uh, around a bunch of different topics in the next in the next few months. So he's kind of taken over that that piece as well. So yeah, awesome. Uh, that'll be good. He's a good man, and um, I, I'm sure a lot of people are happy that he's being promoted into that yeah. position. So a um, couple of other last questions here that I had. Uh, this one really doesn't relate to you in any way but uh it, it is interesting to me that usa swimming doesn't host more of the big meets in 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 america like world championships I mean, it obviously got the la olympics coming up which is the pinnacle but like does it surprise you that more events aren't hosted uh, in america I, I think from the world champion i mean i think with the last um I don't know, I guess the last short course was 04. Mm. We've hosted like World Juniors. We've hosted Pam Packs, Junior Pam Packs, some World Cups. Um, it's a pretty expensive endeavor to host a long course world championships. It's not clearly not just swimming. Um, right. You have to ha include all the other the other sports. It's um, it's pretty expensive um, and yeah. we don't we don't get state funds. Right. So we wouldn't get you know, the, the you know, other people to pay for it. We would have to raise those yeah. ourselves and, and then to get other aquatic sports in, um, to put in their pieces, their, their involvement as well. Right. That, like I said, it's not just swimming, um, yeah. when it comes to the world aquatics championships. So, um, so while, while we're definitely looking forward to, to LA 2028 and being, being on home soil, like, um, we're hoping, we're hoping we can maybe do something leading up to that, you know, where we can have a lot, some more opportunities leading, leading up to that competition. Um, but, um, you know, doing our part where we can, uh, is, like I said, in hosting, you know, world juniors and world cups, and et cetera, but, um, not something I think long-term for us in the future to host a world yeah. products championship. Well, in terms of big events and something that you've done far better than any other country in the world uh, for a number of years now is, is hosting the Olympic trials. And mm -hmm. uh, this one's going to be a big one next year in, in Indy. Um, how's that coming about? How's it looking? Yeah, it's going to be great. I mean, what an opportunity for our athletes, right, to to swim in what we will deem probably the largest swim meet ever, you know, like to be completely honest, um, to be in, a, in an NFL stadium is, um, mm -hmm. is pretty incredible. I think, and I remember we went from – little old I, little old IUPUI to Long Beach, mm. you know, and put a temporary pool up in Long Beach, how much bigger that was. And then to go to Omaha and now to Indy, um, you know, the Indy sports corp definitely knows what they're doing when putting on events and, and our events team knows how to run a, you know, pretty technically flawless competition. Right. And so that being the number one goal to select the best Olympic team, that's, that's still the number one goal. Um, even though we're in a big NFL stadium, but, um, you know, looking at how we can make the, the experience better for our coaches and our athletes, like, we have more warm up space. We have more seating for them. Yet we can still sell a ton of tickets to have to support the sport, right? And and um, show off our sport and what a great sport it is. That's, it's such a massive event, isn't it? Like uh, yeah. our, uh, Olympic trials is is so nerve wracking. I don't know what it was like for you, but like just going to the Olympic trials and knowing that you had to try and qualify for the team, finish one two in the country, like. That was the most nerve wracking I've ever experienced in my yeah. life of just trying to qualify. So like, is there a way that you can prepare the athletes uh, at all for something like an event that big? Yeah. So funny. I've gotten a couple of phone calls about like, how do you drown out the noise? Right. And like, right. just trying to, you know, like trying to make it just another swim meet, like you know, mm. you talked about. And um, it is like making Olympic trials, in my opinion, or making the Olympic team at Olympic trials is harder than, than the Olympic games in some cases, in my yeah. opinion, because it's right. just, it's so intense. And then, um, you know, and, and emotional, right? Like mm. I remember, I remember when I think it was, it must have been Sydney, where where I was getting ready to, you know, I made the Olympic team one night, but a really good friend of mine didn't the next night. But then she right. made it the next night, and it was just like, mm. just the emotion and the up and down, and and um, that that I think is a lot more prevalent at our Olympic trials than at than at um, the Olympic Games, right? And so, right. Um, not just are you worried, you know, physically, it's eight days, right? That was another. I mean, you got to do an eight. Or I guess this year's nine, right? And so. Just to do that for nine days, it's, it's taxing. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's very taxing. Well, yeah. Listen, Lindsay, I appreciate your time. Um, I know you're super busy, and and to give me um, an hour of your time is very appreciated. Um, I've I've always 
you know, even coming from Australia, I've looked at USA Swimming as as the pinnacle, you know, and, and you guys are still there. Everybody's analyzing everything that you do. Everybody's watching everything that you do. And um, a lot of times we're just in awe of what you're doing as well. So um, continue the good work. Uh, you're doing awesome. It's it's very competitive landscape, which is fun too, you know. Yes, um, Some really good meets coming up in the next few months and then leading up into the Olympic trials. So it's going to be a, a big year of swimming. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, we're excited too. Thank, thanks for having me and thanks for taking the time to reach out to me as well. Yeah. Okay. Take care, Lindsay. Take care. Bye.